Hello everybody, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. Uh, we're going to be painting this abstract um, field landscape today, but before we get into it, um, I've been using this palette. I'm going to zoom out a bit here. I've been using this palette for ever since the beginning of this channel, and this company named Grabby reached out to me um, asking if I wanted to try their watercolors and you would be surprised at how many companies reach out to me that have absolutely nothing to do with watercolor art painting or anything artistic in general um, to begin with so I was like you know what I've never really tried any other watercolors so other than you know walmart and dollar store quality so why not give these a go so i'm going to be trying these out today i haven't tried them before it, it came with like a a swatch thing uh which i if i'm honest i'm probably not going to use because i can see the colors right in front of me but when you open the box it came with this really fancy schmancy metal container and it's like I don't know pretty pretty fancy to me um so we have a hundred colors here some of them are metallic over here um now these are considerably smaller than the half pans like I would say it's almost it's a little bit bigger than half Actually, okay, maybe it's almost the same size as my other ones. They just look smaller because they're all really close together. And then it also, I was really excited when I saw it came with a, a new pencil because mine, the black one that I use, it's almost um, like I, I almost have to replace it. And I've never used these before. Um, so maybe I'll use them one of these days, but that's what came with it. And so today I'm going to be trying these guys out. And if I like it, then you'll know because I will include a link in the description where you can purchase some for probably a discounted price. I just haven't figured out the details yet. And I realize I should have. Before getting into this video but anyways so like I said we are painting a simple painting simple abstract painting today um, so I've got my piece of paper that's taped around the borders here and uh, just using my size 14 Grumbacher brush um, maybe that's the next thing that I should except his paintbrushes to try out so if you guys know any companies okay one thing i like right away is that as soon as i put water on this i picked up pigment and with my other watercolors like i have to really kind of mix it in for a while before i can pick pigment up the only thing I don't like about this is that it doesn't have a space or like an area where I can mix colors. So I'm going to just add my old palette here. Um, I just won't use the metallic ones today, I guess. So that's probably not the most practical thing but anyway so very very pigmented I like that right away and I have so many greens to choose from now holy is this green too oh yes it is Okay, I think this whole thing is green, yeah. Oh my gosh, guys, I have so many greens now. And 
I actually have the names, but I'm still going to stick with my whole thing where I don't tell you the names because the names don't matter. Use whatever greens you have laying around. Okay, I'm sorry. So, we're going to start out with the bottom half here by creating just a... Uh, like a lawn, a green grass, if you will. And remember, this is abstract, so you don't have to be too particular. So these colors are going on really nicely. I'm so far very happy, so far. But my previous palette was a $30 palette and you know, I've never really experimented with anything else, so take from that what you will. But so far, I am impressed with the quality. So I've just morphed that into a yellow um, that I want to add a little bit of orange into. That's more of a yellow. Oops. I am not, the only thing I will say is, you know, the, the color, the little squares are definitely smaller than my previous one. And I don't like that because you, you kind of touch the other colors at the same time. So I'm not a fan of that, but I mean, that can probably be very easily rectified, but I don't know if you guys can see the quality difference. Like even the gradient here is so, um, the colors are much more vibrant, much more opaque than the palette that I always use in my videos. And I'm not trying to, what would you say, like, um, harp on my the the palette I've used all these years because clearly it's a good palette if I if I've used it all these years or I, I don't know maybe I just learned to deal with it but it's um that's all I had to compare to so so far I'm very very impressed with the color quality but maybe it just doesn't take very much to impress me. <laughs> like even the mix, when I mix them, the two colors together, it creates this gorgeous gradient with such little effort. So, okay, based on this, I am gonna include the link to these in the description. And I think, I, I haven't even looked into this because again, like I, I, I'm not gonna spawn, um, feature something and say, oh, go buy this if I don't like it myself. So I didn't even bother looking into the links and stuff, but after I'm done filming this, I am going to look into the links so that I can provide you with one and it'll probably give me like a little bit of compensation if you use my link. So that would be pretty cool if you did if you wanted to buy yourself this set and they're pretty affordable i believe uh so i just picked up i don't know what color this is man maybe i should take out this is the only time you will ever see me do this which way does this go oh it goes like that i think like this Okay, so I just used Payne's Gray. That's what that was called. But it looks more like a purple, purpley gray to me. Um, so I'm just placing this over the yellow portion, yellowy orange portion, to try and make it look like there's clouds and whatnot. I don't like this stringy thing that happens, but that's not, I don't think that that's the watercolor. I think that is just the paper, which is once again, why 
like I'm not everybody else seems to love art I think it's called arches man I don't have the paper in front of me but I think it's the arches paper that everyone's a huge fan of and I'm not I've had I mean I buy it because it's the cheapest and most accessible thing to me but I uh um I've used better ones and if this one company that I was once sponsored by shipped to Canada then I would uh probably order that one because that one was really good um arches is overrated but I still use it it's still very good in comparison to non-cotton paper obviously um and if so many artists use it, it obviously cannot be that bad I just am picky when I've experienced something a little better But yeah, I love the colors, very vibrant. So I'm just applying like streaks everywhere. Again, this is supposed to be very abstract. I'm sorry if I kind of stopped explaining things halfway. Um, but you can just kind of follow what I was doing. So, I'm going to pick up this blue, it, no that's not really, it's kind of hard to tell what color they are before, the, before they're wet. This looks more purpley. There we go, okay. Okay, that's way too purple. That is too purple. <sighs> So I'm just going back and forth here with my colors and you have to work with your background so you obviously have to maintain the moisture. Another thing I haven't tried which I intend to eventually is use a spray bottle to keep your background moist while you're working on it before it dries. I just haven't gotten to that yet. Um, okay. I think I'm okay with this. I'm gonna let this dry and then we will come back to it for our next step. My hair dryer smells like it's about to implode or explode. Um, okay. So now we're gonna create a horizon line with uh, very abstract trees. So basically just green, dark green blobs. Um, so I still have to get used to the color options on my palette here. Because unlike my previous palette, it's not super obvious what the color is until you wet it and pick up the color. Um... But yeah, I just love the opacity of these, the intensity, the opacity. The only problem I foresee with that is that I'm going to go through these colors very quickly because they're so um, intense. They're so thick. Like when you when you pick the colors up, they're just very, very thick. Okay, I realize I made a mistake. I should have done this while it was still wet. I kind of forgot uh, to create the horizon line. We can re-wet it. But I really don't feel like doing that. So I don't think I'm going to. 
So I'm just painting on my horizon line here, just a straight line. And see if this background was still wet, then this part would kind of, you know, spread into the background a little bit and look very abstract, whereas now it's very opaque, obviously. Uh, I'm gonna just put that brush aside because it's so loaded with that pigment that I don't want to rinse it and waste it. And I'm gonna pick up some lighter green because our sun is kind of in this general location. Oh my gosh. Guys, I love this. I love this paint. It's so opaque that it's like I mean, I've never used um, gouache before, but this is what it, I think it feels like to use gouache. It's so, so opaque for watercolor. So I just rinsed, rinsed that brush and I'm going underneath a little bit with just water because I do want to fade that bottom out a little bit. I don't want it to look, uh, you know, totally, um, uh, what am I trying to say? I don't want the bottom to be this harsh line. I do want it to be nice and delicate. And I just extended that downwards because if I just did that one line, then it would dry into like this cauliflower effect and I don't want that. Um, so softening that top with the lighter green using this pigment really I really like how that turned out turned out I'm gonna pick up this lime green yellow and just add it just around where the sun is I must say that the best way to learn how to paint with water watercolor is use subpar materials, and that goes for paint, paintbrushes, and paper, for as long as you possibly can. Because when you finally get the higher quality stuff, you will appreciate it in a way that a beginner just could not appreciate it. You will your your watercolor skills will be so amplified just by switching to a higher quality um, piece of equipment whether it's your paintbrush or your watercolors or your paper that you know it'll all that time that you spent working with um, subpar quality stuff where you thought that it's why aren't I improving like, I must be so bad at watercolor. All of that will be worth it because you will realize that it was just, it wasn't you. You you were working, your skills were kind of as far as they could be with the materials that you had. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm very, maybe I'm just easily pleased, guys. Maybe, like, if you've tried tons of watercolor paints, maybe, I don't know. This might not be as revolutionary for you as it, as it seems to be for me, but I'm very impressed with this paint quality. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave that for now. That's our horizon line. Uh, we're going to wait for that to dry, and then we'll kind of add our finishing details, which, like, it already looks like a field, but we'll add some more things that maybe spruce it up a little bit more. I'm actually going to take some black and just quickly drop that in. Just to darken some of these side tree areas. Awesome, okay. Okay, I am really hoping that that is dry. I can see that it's not fully dry, but 
I'm gonna go for this anyway because I am not patient. So we're gonna paint a deciduous tree since this doesn't really look like an evergreen landscape. Um, so I, I just picked up my size 14 again because it has that really intense green on it. And I'm going to have my tree over here. And I'm painting from the uh, inside out because I want to do the same thing with this guy that I did with the this thing here where I switch paintbrushes and I pick up some lighter pigment and I lighten the edges with that lighter green. because it's close to the sun. I should probably explain that part. So it illuminates it much more. Like so. Switching back to the other one, just to drop in some more darkness. Because it will be, like, because it's right in front of the sun, the, the center should certainly be much darker. Man, see, I just went back to my old palette to pick up some black. And I have to do probably twice as many brush strokes to pick up the same amount of pigment. Uh, it's wild, it really is. Okay. And now I'm going to pick up a smaller brush. Um, what is this? Double zero by Winsor & Newton. And I'm going to pick up some brown. Yeah, the only downfall of this, and now I certainly understand the swatch thing, is uh, that when you wet it, when you wet these colors, they're a much different color than when they're dry. So, just something to keep in mind. So I've just mixed some brown and black together and I'm going to paint on just a simple tree trunk. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And uh, the other thing I want to do is, well, I'm going to actually while I'm here with this paintbrush. I'm just gonna paint, oops, that's not dry. Oh well. I just wanted to add some other little shrubby trees. 
So I just painted on these tiny lines. I'll go in a little bit closer for you. I painted in these tiny lines as the tree trunks. And then we'll just paint, like they don't even have to be trees, they can just be shrubs, whatever. Remember, this is supposed to be abstract. So don't get too caught up in the details here. Yeah, that's definitely not dry. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, I'm switching to my quadruple zero, my very favorite brush. Now, if you can find me a thin detail brush that I like more than this one, uh, I will be impressed. So if any watercolor or painting company wants to reach out to me and take on that task, I would be happy to try out some new brushes because these ones are wearing down, so I need to replace them soon. So yeah, I have my quadruple zero. I'm just going to add some birds flying in the distance. Again, they're very abstract. They're meant to be very abstract. So don't get, uh, you know, too caught up in the, in the details here. Um, you can even just have like little lines or dots or whatever. Uh, That's enough. Oh, sorry. You probably didn't even see half of that. But I just added some birds flying in the distance there. So that's our abstract painting. I'm going to peel this tape off so you can see. Actually, before I do it, do I want to add anything? You could add more things. I could make this look so much better. But it's meant to be, um, I'm going to say, quick in parentheses. Or not parent. whatever these are, quotation marks. <laughs> because it was the 30 minute long video, but um, we're just gonna leave it because the main purpose was also to test out these watercolors and wow, the vibrancy. I am so impressed with, their, with the quality. I am really, really happy with these. So I'm gonna leave the link in the description if I find one um, and it'll probably give me a little bit of a commission if you use that link, if you choose to buy these, but from this one painting, and I only used a handful of colors, I didn't even try out the metallic ones and all the ones on this side. Um, I'm really impressed with the quality. So um, you have my stamp of approval for these guys. Definitely would choose these over the current ones that I'm using, that I've used for three years in all of my previous tutorials. So. Um, if you're interested, the link will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching, guys, uh, and I will see you in the next one.